Just two days. That's all it took for this robot to learn how to walk like a human. Let that sink in. While it takes us years to master walking, this AI accomplished it in 48 hours. The OpenAI O2 model just crushed the GPQA benchmark with a 105% score. What's up everyone? I've got so much to cover today. My brain is literally exploding with all these AI updates. I need to talk about something that absolutely blew my mind. Unitree just dropped an incredible video showing their G1 humanoid robot, and what they've achieved is honestly pretty insane. They managed to teach their robot to walk with human-like movement in just two days. Two days. Now, if you're not deep into robotics, you might be thinking, okay, walking, big deal. But trust me, this is huge. You see, getting robots to walk isn't just about moving legs back and forth. Human walking is an incredibly complex dance of balance, weight distribution, and constant micro-adjustments. Most robotics companies have been struggling with this for years. Let me break down why this is so impressive. Traditional robots, like the ones you might see in factories, they move in these very rigid mechanical ways. Think about those assembly line robots. They're precise, but very robotic. But for a robot to work alongside humans, it needs to move more naturally. It needs to handle all the little imperfections in the real world. Here's what really caught my attention in the demo, the stability. This is where Unitree is really showing off. You can literally push this robot while it's standing on two legs and it doesn't fall over. It just recovers. Now think about that for a second. Most humanoid robot demos you see, they've got these safety tethers hanging from the ceiling because one wrong move and you've just damaged a quarter million dollars worth of equipment. But this thing, it's just out there handling pushes like it's no big deal. I did some digging into how they achieved this and it's fascinating. They're using something called reinforcement learning, but with a twist. Instead of just training in the real world, which would be incredibly time consuming and risky, they're doing most of the learning in virtual environments. The robot essentially practices millions of times in simulation before taking a single step in the real world. And this is where it gets really interesting, the transfer learning. One of the biggest challenges in robotics has always been this gap between simulation and reality. What works perfectly in a virtual environment often falls apart in the real world because well, reality is messy. But Unitree seems to have cracked this problem, at least partially. Think about it like this. Imagine trying to learn to ride a bike in a video game. You might get really good at the game, but the first time you get on a real bike, you're probably still going to fall. What Unitree has done is like finding a way to make the video game skills actually translate to real world biking skills. The implications of this are huge. If we can reliably transfer skills from simulation to reality, we're looking at a future where robots can learn new tasks incredibly quickly. Need your robot to learn how to climb stairs? Load up the simulation, let it practice for a few million iterations, and boom, you've got a stair climbing robot. But here's what really gets me excited, the adaptability. In the video, you can see the robot handling different surfaces, different types of pushes, all kinds of real world variables. This isn't just pre-programmed movement, this is genuine adaptation. It's learning and responding in real time. Much like how we humans constantly adjust our balance without even thinking about it. Now, are there still limitations? Of course. Energy efficiency is still a huge challenge. These movements require a lot of power. And battery technology is still playing catch up. And we're still a ways off from seeing these robots doing complex tasks like running or dancing. But man, two days to achieve human-like walking. That's a game changer. It shows just how fast the field is moving. A few years ago, getting a robot to walk at all was a massive achievement. Now we're talking about robots that can handle pushes, recover from disturbances, and move in ways that actually look natural. Another piece of news coming from OpenAI during their recent Reddit Emma, someone asked Sam Altman, what is your bold prediction about 2025? Sam replied, saturating all benchmarks. So first off, this whole idea of saturating all benchmarks, that's how Sam Altman described OpenAI's goal for 2025. And I was like, wait, what? Saturating benchmarks? Essentially, Sam's talking about pushing AI to perform at the top of its game across the board, from language models to image analysis to reasoning. It's ambitious, really ambitious, but hey, if anyone's going to push for that, it's Sam Altman and OpenAI, right? I saw a post from Sam where he said the O2 model gets 105% on the GPQA benchmark. I'm not sure how much of that was a joke or if he was being serious, but one thing's for sure, 2025 is going to be wild. All right, let's talk about Ilya. A Reddit user asked Sam, what did Ilya see? This was a huge mystery, with people speculating that Ilya saw something terrifying, like AGI or ASI, and that's why he tried to fire Sam. When Sam was asked about him, he called Ilya a visionary who really saw the potential of AI early on, 
But here's the thing. Ilya left OpenEye, and rumors have been flying about why. Like, why would one of the co-founders just up and go? Some people are speculating that it has to do with his stance on AI safety. Ilya's always been one of those people who thinks far ahead about the dangers of AI. So it could be that his vision started diverging from where OpenEye is headed. He's starting his own AI venture now. Could it be because he wants a different approach to AI? Or maybe it's about building AI in a safer way. Whatever the reason, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what he does next. Now, this one's interesting. They got asked about the biggest bottleneck in AI progress. And the answer was, well, hardware. Sam and the team basically said that right now, AI's growth isn't just limited by ideas, but by the actual hardware they're running on. GPUs are in crazy high demand, especially those NVIDIA chips, and there's just not enough of them to go around. So OpenEye's having to pick and choose what projects they throw their resources behind, and it sounds like they're prioritizing certain models, like ones that improve reasoning capabilities. And here's a thought. Is this AI hardware thing the new space race? Because whoever cracks the hardware shortage could pretty much dominate the AI field. We're talking bigger, faster, smarter models, the kind that might actually be able to push those 2025 predictions. But yeah, what do you think? Are we about to see a whole new level of competition in AI, but this time over chips instead of code? So what's your take? Do you think they're on the right track for 2025, or is this all too ambitious? And hey, let me know in the comments what you think about Ilya's departure, because I feel like that could be huge. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you in the next one.